Stop fixing the employees when the system is broken. Have you noticed that organizations are acting like screwdrivers? They are going around trying to fix you so you can work much better. Employees are not machines. They are not going to work better because you try to fix them with one more training, one more piece of feedback, one more assessment to identify what is wrong with you so then we can fix that. One more well-being initiative that is going to train you how to cope with the stress that is given at, imposed on you by the broken system. Let's talk about that because this is something that I can't deal with. It is very, very difficult for me to deal with and to see one more initiative coming out that is that aims to fix the individual. When Oxford University clearly said this year, earlier this year in January, that initiatives that are targeting the individuals are absolutely useless. Hi, I'm Sylvia, an organizational psychologist, and I talk about anything and everything HR related. And today we need to talk about the fact that we got this wrong. We got this so wrong. We are trying to fix individuals instead of the broken system. I wrote an article this morning. I'm going to put it in the, in the comment below and you can read it. And I really would like with this, I'm not going to keep that, or I'm going to keep this video short. But my question is, do we not see that this is the problem? That the system is the problem and employees are just reacting to it. Employees are reacting to, to the system where we force them to come back to the office and commute for hours every single day when we know that commuting is probably the most stressful activity that we can, uh, we can, uh, we can do. And why we force them into this stressful activity, we bring in a well-being agenda teach them how to cope with the stress instead of removing the stressors, which we can. So once again, it's just not what, what needs to be done. And it's so interesting to see that HR professionals don't get to this conclusion and leaders that, hey, enough of these initiatives, enough of one more program, employees are reacting to poor leadership and management, right? They react to systems that are forcing them to do things that are not necessary today. And I'm going to give you a happy company example that has no initiative of any kind. So I was working with one of the companies and it's a pharmaceutical company, it's a big company, um, last week or two weeks ago. And these guys, these senior leaders were happy. And the reason they were happy, not because they had any kind of interventions and programs, nothing. Um, they were happy because they had flexible work hours. So they could work anytime really during the day that they wanted. So one of them was like, oh, I'm working between eight and 12. Then I go off for the afternoon. Then I work the next eight, uh, four hours in the evening because of the family arrangement. The other lady was doing something similar because of her kids. They also have flexibility in going to the office or stay or work from home. There are occasions when they are called into the office because, you know, sometimes you just need to have a face to face meeting and they are fine with it. They understand that. Then they have autonomy in how they do the job. So they are given the KPIs, they've been trained how to do the job, they are given the KPIs and they manage themselves. They are measured and they know that if they don't deliver in two consecutive quarters, they are probably out. So there is no IDPs, there is no PIPs, there is no HR stuff that we think it's necessary, right? To create happy employees. These guys don't even have any appraisal. You should hear the annual appraisals they have. I mean, they have, but nothing what we imagine at corporations uh, or what we do in corporations. So, and then they have good people. So what was surprising for me that every one of the participants said, we are very happy with the culture because the people are nice. That's it. There's no ice cream party. There's no pizza party. There is no outing. There's no team building. There's nothing. These guys work in different locations 
And you know what was really surprising? That they were different locations for two, three years, two or three of the, two, three of the candidates, they working together for three years, they never met face to face. And this was the first time they were brought into one room and they were like, they known each other forever. So they have nice people, they love the culture, they have autonomy, they are not being told, brought in, and then told how to do the job. They are treated as grown-up adults and responsible adults. If you don't deliver, you're out. We're not gonna play around with you with, with the PIPs and programs and whatever. You can do the job or you cannot do the job. And then obviously with um, the flexible working arrangement. So that's it. So this is what employees are, are reacting to. And that's the system that I just explained to you, right? Because your, 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 your employees are really reacting to the environment. And if you don't focus on that, it's, you're not doing anything. So stop fixing the individuals. And the funny thing is that, that HR and employees complain both, complain how overwhelmed they are, right? One more initiative, one more initiative, one more program. But nobody has actually ever sat down and thought, okay, so maybe if we are all overwhelmed, Maybe it's too much. What is it that I can remove? Organizations, HR department looks like a flea market of inventions, uh, interactions, interventions, programs, and you know, parties. Get rid of it, declutter it, because guess what, HR? You are overwhelmed with the number of initiatives and programs that things that have been thrown onto you, including DEI, right? Which is so badly done because your competency framework completely ignores your DEI because competency frameworks, behavioral competency frameworks are literally telling individuals, this is how you feel, this is how you think, this is what you think, this is how you behave, and this is what you say. So what's the point of your DEI where you scream about diversity and how we have to be all different when you are trying to shape and mold people into the same shape? And, and people's brain, they comprehend these contradictions and they go like, okay, so this is the leadership style, the framework that I need to follow on top of the competency-based framework, individual uh, behavioral competencies. So now you created a whole new person, but here you are telling me that I should come as I am because my uniqueness within your diversity agenda is valued. We can't comprehend this. The brain goes like, what am I supposed to do? So then people push back and they don't even think about it probably, but they do push back. So you're all overwhelmed. And I give you a sentence that really woke me up once with the overwhelming number of initiatives and agendas in HR, because Throughout the year, we have something going on. HR has a calendar. God forbid we keep the calendar empty because then we can't justify our salaries. Leave your calendar alone, okay? And leave your employees alone. Because one day I was one of the restaurant managers. I went to see him to remind him about something submission date. And he looked at me, we had a very good relationship, but I actually, he looked at me seriously and he said, you HR give us, a, 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 every week HR gives us a, some bullshit that we need to complete and entertain. We have work to do here. We have money to make, you know that? And it was the best sentence that I ever received because then I realized I never thought about it before. How much of uh, activities and, and things we push down on the organization and operation why they are, their job is full time to running the operation. And then corporate comes down, right? HR on people and people manager, do this. So every month we have something, annual appraisal, check-ins, PIPs, PDPs, engagement agenda takes three months of the, the year, right? 
Then you have your calibration. You always, HR always has something. Then the monthly, uh, monthly celebrations, then the weekly bullshit, then an operation is fed up. It's not only HR who is tired of these, your people are tired of this. My employees always said, do we really need to go for the engagement activity? What can I say? Yeah, go because, you know, we play the game. And then to solve this overwhelm, um, the overwhelmness is not even a word, to solve the, the, the fact that everybody is overwhelmed, we bring in a well-being agenda, an extra curriculum <laughs> to address that we are all overwhelmed. So we add one more activity to the madness. Do we think? Do we actually think? So HR, stop fixing the individuals. Fix your system, because this is what is causing the problem for everybody. And I'm going to stop this video here because there's no point of, I'm going to put the link in. And if you want more areas, what do you fix and what you can get rid of, I'm going to put the link for my book as well. So you can read 365 five things to think about that you can probably get rid of. And, um, yeah. And also, like, uh, let me close with this. How do you think your employees feel when you go around acting like a screwdriver with the aim of fixing employees? Let's say you're fixing me with the intention of me working better so you can get more productivity out of me. How do you think employees respond to this intention of yours related to your well-being agenda, related to anything, engagement? Because everything that we see in organizations has a business case attached to it. So employees are hearing a clear message of, I'm going to help you to get better. I train you, I engage you, I keep you happy, I keep whatever mental health, well-being, fit, give you food, because I know that if I do that, you're going to produce more. Now, you, don't, you, you must have only one brain cell to figure out that people will push back against it, because it's exactly the same as I'm coming to your birthday, I give you a present, because I know that you have more money, you are richer than I am, and when it's my birthday, you're going to give me a present that is more expensive. Now, I understand this is, the work is a business transaction, but then let's keep it that way. You come here, work eight hours, deliver this and finish, and nobody needs to do anything. So think about that.